Today on Public Eye News, the Michigan DNR is offering nearly $1.6 million for fisheries and aquatic resources, and a plane crash kills two in San Diego. Later, Brendan Ford will have your weather, and Michael Cudahy will be back with your sports update. Hi, I'm Ross Ray. And I'm Justin Van Toff, and this is Public Eye News. The Beaumere UP Heritage Center will open a new exhibit focused on Native American tribes in the modern day and the revitalization of their culture and customs. Opening October 9th, the Seventh Fire, a decolonizing experience, will be a multimedia display featuring modern life and experiences from the perspective of people that are a part of the Native American communities, like tribal elders, Anishinaabe historians and scholars, students and faculty. The exhibit will showcase interviews from these various community members touching upon decolonization as well as cultural aspects like food, language, and education. It will also have a timeline of the history of the Anishinaabe people and a space for visitors to gather and discuss their reaction and thoughts. And the Northern Michigan University Regional Police Academy will host two informational meetings. October 27th on the campus of Bay College. They're scheduled at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the rooms 221 of the Bonifas building. The meetings are for those interested in attending NMU's Regional Police Academy, which begins May 2022 and concludes in August 22. Topic areas will include Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standard Requirements to enter the Academy, NMU requirements to attend the Academy, and an overview of the Academy and a question and answer session. To sign up for one of the meetings, please call the NMU Regional Police Academy at 906-227-1408. And Northern Michigan University Theater and Dance presents the world premiere stage adaptation of Above the Timberline, a visual journey by Gregory Manches. In an alternate future where the weather of the world has been permanently altered, the son of a famed polar explorer sets out in search of his father, who disappeared while looking for a lost city buried under the snow. But Wes Singleton believes his father is still alive somewhere above the timberline. The play is adapted from the exquisitely painted novel. Showtimes in Forest Roberts Theater are 8 p.m. Friday and Saturday, Octobers 15th and 16th, and Wednesday through Saturday, Octobers 20 through the 23rd. A sensory friendly of the performance is scheduled at 2 p.m. October 16th. The production is directed by Kelly Crawford Truckee. The Michigan DNR is currently offering nearly $1.6 million in grant funding for a variety of activities involving and improving state fisheries and aquatic resources. The Fisheries Habitat Grant Program is a competitive program open to local, state, federal, and tribal governments, as well as nonprofit groups. The funding can be used for aquatic, aquatic habitat conservation, dam management, and aquatic habit and recreation in the Aw Sable Manistee and the Muskegon River, rather, watersheds. For more information regarding the program's pre proposal guidelines and forms, go to michigan.gov forward slash DNR grants. Yesterday, investigators returned to the home of a Michigan woman who has been missing since spring. They're hoping to find any more information regarding the 52-year-old Dee Warner, who lived near Tecumseh. If you have any information about Warner's disappearance, please call the Lena Way County Sheriff's Office at 517-264-5364. And in Mears, Michigan, the popular northern Michigan sand dunes located about 75 miles north of Grand Rapids attracted two cousins from Illinois. They decided to ride their ATVs across the dunes at high speeds and ended up tragically flipping over a very steep spot. One of them lost their lives, the other suffered injuries. There have been no other details released at this time. And then don't touch the dial because after this break, we'll be back with your national and international news. Stay tuned. The largest Arctic expedition ever. And we want to understand why the ice is melting. It impacts everything we do, all of the weather that we experience. There's never been data like this. We all have to care. To protect the planet, to protect everyone. What is at stake? Everything, I would say. Arctic Drift on Nova. Wednesday night at 9 on WNMU-TV. Welcome back. Destructive California wildfires driven by intense winds caused damage at two mobile home parks, destroying some trailers and one person suffered burns, officials said. 
The fires on Monday also toppled trees, whipped up blinding dust clouds, and forced the utility to cut power to thousands of customers in an effort to prevent wildfires. Although the winds were easing on Tuesday, about 30 structures were destroyed Monday afternoon when wind-driven flames roared through the Rancho Marina RV Park in Sacramento County. And a twin-engine airplane fell from the sky in a residential neighborhood near San Diego, killing at least two people and causing damage to homes in the area. The pilot of the airplane was killed on impact, as well as the driver of a UPS truck that the plane hit. Santee Deputy Fire Chief Justin Masuchita said that two people were injured and taken to local hospitals, and homes were destroyed and multiple vehicles caught fire. With more on the story, CBS's Carter Evans reports from the scene. Is there anybody? I don't know. It's a chaotic scene, fire everywhere, and neighbors scrambling to pull a woman through a window of her burning home. My dog! Where's your dog? She had, it looked like flash burns, so her hair was burned, her face was burned, her hands were burned. There's somebody back there! Amanda Nelson shot this video as neighbors tore down the back fence to rescue the woman's husband. Let him sit down, let him sit down. Security video shows the twin engine Cessna in a nosedive before exploding into flames. As far as the plane occupants and the extent of the crash damage, uh, it was non survivable. The aircraft was owned by Dr. Sugata Das, a cardiologist who would often fly between Yuma, Arizona, and San Diego. As the plane lost altitude, you could hear the concern from the control tower. Low altitude alert. Climb immediately. Climb the airplane. Maintain 5,000. Expedite climb. Climb the airplane, please. Investigators say the plane slammed into a UPS truck, killing the driver before crashing into a home with so much force that one of the plane's engines landed in the living room of another home. Neighbors say they're just thankful they got to this woman in time. How did that feel when you got her out? Perfect. But there was nothing they could do to help the UPS driver, whom they'd all come to know over the course of the pandemic. A really, really nice guy. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. Right now, they're preserving the scene for NTSB investigators. Carter Evans, CBS News, Santee. Earlier today, Chinese authorities confirmed that 13 people had died after a bus crash Monday. Amid heavy flooding, it has also caused 15 other fatalities in the northern Shanxi province. 37 people from the bus have been rescued, and the driver is currently in custody as he ignored warnings about attempting to cross a bridge covered in surging waters. The floods have also cost the province more than 5 billion yuan as thousands of homes have collapsed and 470,000 acres have been destroyed. And in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott is taking aim at vaccine mandates with a new order prohibiting them from, for workers across the state. And one pharmaceutical company is seeking emergency use authorization for a new pill it says could help save lives for the unvaccinated who catch COVID-19. CBS News correspondent Laura Pastetta reports from New York. Texas Governor Greg Abbott's new executive order forbids any entity, including private businesses, from enforcing vaccine mandates in the nation's second most populated state. The Republican governor's order covers, quote, any individual, including an employee or a consumer, who objects to such vaccination for any reason of personal conscience, based on a religious belief, or for medical reasons, including prior recovery from COVID-19. The move takes aim at the Biden administration's requirement for companies with 100 or more employees to get those workers vaccinated or tested weekly. This is something that's going to have to be decided in the courts. And in the end, uh, the federal government normally wins these battles. As more Americans are urged to get shots, drug maker Merck may be a step closer to distributing its COVID-19 treatment that comes in a pill. Merck is asking the Food and Drug Administration for an emergency use authorization for molnupiravir. It's targeted at unvaccinated people who have already developed COVID-19 symptoms. Just imagining as a primary care physician the power of an oral outpatient medication such as um, molnupiravir. It would be a remarkable game changer. Merck says early trials show the pill cut hospitalizations and deaths by about half. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Don't go too far because after this break, we'll be back with your weather and sports. Stay tuned. Get set for a journey you've never taken. This is amazing. I'm Peter Greenberg, and I'll show you a country you never really knew. Ooh, hot. 
From Roman ruins to downhill races, we'll see how surprising this old and new country really is. This is what I came for. There are countless treasures, all hiding in plain sight. And I'll show them to you. Welcome to Hidden Turkey. Saturday night at 8. Hello and welcome back to Public Eye News. I'm your weatherman for the day, Brendan Ford. Here in Marquette, it is very cloudy and those clouds will continue throughout the week. Anyways, getting into today's current conditions, it is cloudy with a temperature of 60 degrees, winds heading north-northwest at 14 miles per hour, and a barometric pressure of 29.79 and rising. Tonight, it will continue to be cloudy with a low of 57 degrees, winds heading northwest at 10 miles per hour. Looking into tomorrow, cloudy with a chance of rain, high, of 66 degrees, winds at southwest 5 miles per hour. Looking throughout the UP, it will be 67 degrees and cloudy in Sault Ste. Marie, 63 degrees and cloudy in Manistique, 64 degrees and cloudy in Escanaba, 65 and cloudy in Menominee, in Iron Mountain, 63 and cloudy, in Ironwood, 58 and cloudy, in Houghton, 60 degrees and cloudy, and in here in beautiful Marquette, it is 60 degrees and cloudy. Lots of clouds throughout the entirety of the UP. Looking ahead on Thursday, it will be 65 degrees high with a low of 45 degrees, mostly cloudy. On Friday, a high of 58 degrees, a low of 45 degrees, cloudy. And on Saturday, it will be 55 degrees, a high of 55 degrees and a low of 45 degrees and mostly cloudy. Let's get with Michael Kadei and look at the sports for today. Hi there. The Turkish Grand Prix was this past weekend with Valtteri Bottas winning uh, and becoming the sixth driver to win a race this season. Bottas is in the last year of his contract with Mercedes and the rest of the podium in Turkey was made up of the two Red Bull drivers, Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. Verstappen retakes his lead in the Drivers' Championship by six points as Lewis Hamilton finished fifth in the race. The next Grand Prix will be next weekend in Austin, Texas. And with Alabama and Penn State losing this past weekend, the AP Top 25 looks a little different. Georgia is at the top with Iowa moving into number two and Cincinnati is the first group of five team to crack the top four of the rankings in the college football playoff era. Oklahoma bench starting quarterback Spencer Rattler but was still able to beat Texas and they moved up to number four in the ranking. Despite Alabama's loss to unranked Texas A&M, Alabama only fell to number five. And it was 17 years ago when the NHL was last featured on ESPN. Yeah by Usher was the top song at the time. Shrek 2 and Spider-Man 2 dominated the box office and Robo Sapiens was the most popular Christmas toy. At 7.30 tonight, the Pittsburgh Penguins will play the defending Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning. The last time ESPN featured an NHL game, the Tampa Bay Lightning were also Stanley Cup champions. The Seattle Kraken will also play their first official game tonight, and it will be against the Vegas Golden Knights. It's always fun to see more stuff come out of hockey there, but I have a very interesting story involving more zebras. Really? I do indeed. A pair of zebras escaped from an indoor zoo in an Illinois pumpkin farm and led workers, zookeepers, and police on a nearly two-hour chase. An employee at the farm said the two zebras, a male and a female, escaped from their pen at the farm's indoor zoo and left the building through the rear doors. Farm workers and zookeepers set out to capture the zebras, and Kane Sounders Kane County Sheriff deputies joined in the chase after receiving a call about the loose zebras on Route 47. Zebras were captured uninjured. And thank you so much for tuning in to Public Eye News. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for some more news action. The preceding program was produced by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television, in studios located in Elizabeth and Edgar Hardin Hall.